Have you ever encountered someone whose views about Palestine and Palestinians are completely fixed, are negative, and there is nothing you can do to change those views? Chances are a person like that has what we call Orientalist views of the Palestinians. Let's explore this particular phenomena a little further. So Orientalism was a term coined by Edward Said. Said, of course, was one of the leading humanistic scholar and taught at Columbia University most of his career. Said was also originally from Palestine. In 1978, Edward Said published a groundbreaking book called Orientalism. Now, I have two or three lectures just explaining the term Orientalism, which of course you can watch, but here I will just give you just my brief understanding of Orientalism as a concept or as a worldview. So, in his book, what Said is trying to explain, you know, over a 280 page book, is this idea, especially in European academic and public consciousness, that a lot of people have a certain view of the Middle East, even before having gone there or having read about that. There is a certain lens with which they see or think about the Middle East. And that is what he calls Orientalism. What is that? So according to Said, most of the times the views of the Orient, for Said the Orient is not what usually in America the Orient is considered, which is the Far East. The Orient in Orientalism is the Middle East. And Orientalism for Said is a way of thinking, experiencing, and talking about the Middle East in which people in the Middle East are imagined as out of sync with time, as dictatorial, as intolerant, as not having a history or as having a violent history, as being undemocratic, and as being people who cannot be changed, who were the same a hundred years ago and are still the same. These are some of the ways in which people imagine or think about the Middle East. Now, obviously what Said is saying is that it is not an accident there is a whole discourse behind this way of looking at the Middle East. So when he discusses it, what he's implying is that there are knowledges produced by historians, by travelers, by poets about the Middle East. There are conferences held. There are ways of designating the Arabs, which are normalized, right? And all of these things, the ac academic works, the media, the journalistic works, posit a certain view of the Middle East, which most of the people, let's say, living in the United States, internalize. That becomes their view, sometimes even without realizing it. Now, it's not just ideology. It is larger than that. It is larger than that because every aspect of culture, academia, journalism, newspapers, TV play a role in creating a certain worldview about the Middle East. That way of thinking about or talking about the Middle East is what Said calls Orientalism. Now, Coming to Palestine, the reason I started with that most Americans' view of Palestinians is Orientalist is that even not knowing anything about Palestinian people, about their struggles, about the history of Palestinians and Israelis, 
people already have opinions about Palestinian people. The highest that Palestinians can accomplish in American mainstream media or general consciousness is that they might enter as victims. We might sometimes acknowledge that they are being victimized. But beyond that, most people who think in terms of the binary structure of Israel and Palestinians do not think of Palestinians as fully realized human beings, right? Or as human beings who should have the same rights as everyone else in the world. So what does this Orientalist approach to Palestinians underwrite in media, but even in your conversations with people? So for example, if you're talking about the West Bank and you tell the people that you know settlements are being made, Palestinians are constantly being pushed out of their properties, right? And naturally they resist it. It is very hard for people to imagine that Israel would do that, even when you give them the, those facts. And the reason behind it is that their political sympathies are already with the state of Israel because it is posited as a democracy, right? Where people have rights, right? And of course, surrounded by hostile neighbors. On the other hand, Palestinians are seen as a problem. So because of our Orientalist view of the Palestinians, we stop seeing them as humans. And their struggles, a lot of people cannot empathize with them, right? And that is what Orientalism underwrites. Another thing that Orientalism underwrites is that any propaganda aimed at the Palestinian people or their leaders, right, is more palatable and easily accepted. For example, if you just look at the report that Department of State had to proffer to the Senate to release the funds for the Israeli bombs and everything else, if you read that report, Israelis are taken on face value. If there is an allegation against them, all the report says is we talk to the Israelis and they have an investigation going on or they said, no, we didn't do that. But everything impugned onto the Palestinians is already negative, right? And Hamas and Palestinians are already conflated. What is worse than that is that when that report is proffered to the media or to the journalists or even to the Senate, not many people point out the Orientalist aspects of it. What else does Orientalism underwrite? Now, if you look at the channel, I have a video on the incarceration, arrest, and illegal detention of Palestinian children. In that video, I offer statistics and valid reports by the United Nations and by Defense for Children International. There is no speculation involved, right? But people who comment and whose views of Palestinians are Orientalists have no qualms even in suggesting that 12-year-old children are by their very nature violent and terroristic. And they see their acts of maybe, what is the most serious act? They threw rocks at an armored personnel carrier, which does nothing to it, right? but they see those acts not as liberatory acts of resistance, but acts that deserve a military trial and a detention without trial. That is the Orientalist view of Palestinians that people cannot even see children as children, right? That is another ramification of having the Orientalized, Orientalist views informed by Orientalism. So of course you must be asking, how is it possible? How can political psyches or people's views of another people can be programmed like that? Well, none of it is random, right? A discourse, which Orientalism is, doesn't come out of thin air. 
it is produced. How is it produced? The media cover Palestinians a certain way, Israelis a certain way, right? That is one element of it. Scholars, pro-Israeli scholars write their books, write their articles, write their journalistic works in which even if it is not said, Palestine is implied as a problem. Palestinians are seen as an impediment to peace or a threat to peace. Journals publish these work. And then if we go into propaganda and lobbying, there are organizations like APAC and KUFI who have a certain political agenda which is connected to the interests of the State of Israel. But in the process of following that agenda, they also create a certain image of Palestinians, right? Their leadership, but as also the people. As a result, then, an average person who doesn't have time to think or read critically internalizes that logic. And once you have internalized that logic, your worldview or your view of Palestinians then automatically is guided by that latent Orientalism which manifests itself in your sympathies or empathy for or against the Palestinian people. So why am I bringing this up? I mean, part of it is my attempt at looking at Palestine and Palestinians from so many different angles, right? I looked at it from the point of view of Franz Fanon, right? We looked at it from the point of view of Paulo Freire, right? And now, of course, we are looking at it from the most prominent Palestinian Americans' work, Edward Said's Orientalism, right? And just this brief conversation can show you that the problem of American view of Palestinians is that it is never really immediate and direct. It's mediated through a discourse called Orientalism. And if we know that and acknowledge it, then maybe we will explore further. Maybe we will learn and ask ourselves these questions you know, people who can see more than 10,000 children dead and children starving in Gaza, and they can rationalize it as a form of collective punishment, right? And they have no problem rationalizing it, not realizing that that's human suffering. And as human beings, they should be able to empathize with it. But since their view of Palestinians without them knowing is, is orientalized, and they look at it or experiences it through an Orientalist lens, the actual Palestinian suffering right now do not come across to them as deserving of their sympathy or empathy because they have already internalized this idea that Palestinians are a problem population. Palestinians are terroristic. Palestinians are an impediment to peace. All of these things have been made possible. This view of Palestinians has been made possible because of the larger Orientalist discourse about Palestine and about Palestinians. And as I said, it is not an accident. There are powerful institutions, journals, newspapers, New York Times, right? TV shows, movies, films that all create a certain Orientalist view of the Palestinian people and their struggles, which always comes across as a struggle which is not geared towards peace, which is not geared towards humanity, but rather a struggle which is aimed at destroying the state of Israel which none of the Palestinian factions or groups are capable of. So that's why I thought, you know, I should have a brief conversation about Orientalism and then make us question our own assumptions, average American perceptions and assumptions about Palestinians, and maybe that might help them at least question 
as to why do they think about Palestinians the way they do. That's all. I hope this is useful to you. Please let me know what you think. I would welcome any good constructive comments. I'm grateful for those. Stay safe, take care, and I will now see you next time. Until then, as always, peace and love.